for the work of reconciliation that has been done. We thank you, Lord God, that all that is available to us through the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for healing. We thank you for hope. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for peace. We thank you for grace. We thank you, Lord God. We just thank you for just keeping us. We thank you, Father, that tonight in this study that you just reveal yourself to every one of us and meet every one of us right where we're at and pull us to that place where we ought to be. Father, we thank you tonight and we give you praise and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. You're on the site. You're amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we have been looking at, you know, Bible study Fridays are just amazing. And it's important that you come and you take somebody with you. Because what happens in Bible study Fridays, it's just amazing. And some people only get this type of information if you enroll in Bible school. And we know that there are so many persons, so many people in the kingdom who will not go to Bible school, who will not plan it, who have with no desire whatsoever. Our life just don't make the opportunity, or we just don't make it, you know, a priority. So come out and let's get together because in this season, we need to be rooted in the Word. So we have been looking at systematic um, theology. You know, one of those courses we will do, imagine you'd have to pay to do it and get it all free, right? So it's just amazing. And we have been looking at man, just been looking at the whole matter of man. You know, we looked at the material aspect of man in our last um, session. That was week before last. And we spoke about the, the, the man has, you know, two areas, if you want to call it that, the material aspect and the non-material aspect. So we, when we looked at the material aspect, we referred, we mentioned that it was the physical structure that we call the body, right? And we had a wonderful time looking at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 that helped us to understand that the body of man was formed from the dust of the ground, that man is really of the earth. Right? And the human body is similar, has similar components, or the thing physics and chemistry and those things, as the elements that we find in the earth. The calcium, the potassium, and all of those things. And then we all, we, we went and we looked at the, the purpose of the body, and we found some um, amazing biblical truth about the purpose or purposes or purpose, whatever you want to say, of the body. And we looked at the fact that when a manufacturer manufactures a thing, the manufacturer has a purpose for the thing. So every blender, every manufacturer of blender, they have a purpose for the blender. They don't um, make the blender and imagine that it's going to do washing machine work, right? That's not the purpose for it. And so God, the creator God, Elohim, the creator God, the all-wise God, the, you know, the magnificent. He had a purpose in mind when he made man. He has a purpose in mind for you. You are here on purpose for purpose. Elohim made you from the very beginning. And we look at the fact that the body he formed from the dust of the ground with his own creative hands, you know, we were formed with his own creative hand. And this literally kind of debunk some other theories out there that we want to tell us how we were formed and where we came from and why we're here and our color and all kinds of things. So we looked at all of that and we were formed from the dust. Thank you so much. Right? So the body is a partner of the soul. And we also looked at the fact that the body was made to glorify God. It is God's temple. So we might have heard the scripture before about the body being the temple of the Lord. And then we also look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. I don't know if you remember, but it's one of my favorite, right? It says, knowing not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own. Do we know that? And then I so love the, the, the one we looked at about um, our body, you know, and, and what it is that we will do if we want to, you know, just gain the whole world and lose our soul. So that was just another amazing, amazing point for us last week. So the week before the last lesson. So we're now at lesson three, and we want to look at the non-material part of man. So this will be pretty quick, real quick. We're gonna be looking at the non-material part of man. 
And I want us to really start with a scriptural account. It is Baptist studies. So I think nothing else will really matter. So let us engage the scripture. And we want to go back to our the chapter that we have been looking at. If we're going to look at man and the very beginning of man, then we really need to be looking in Genesis. So let's go back to Genesis. And we want to start with Genesis 1, verse 26 through to 27. So I give you a little chance to find your scripture because I don't want you to be just listening to me. I want you to be reading your scripture regardless of the version you have. I want you to read it because it is in the word that we meet God. And so as you get in the word for yourself, illuminations will come. Something will jump out at you as you read the scripture. So I'm talking this now so that you can find your Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Are we all there? And the, the verses say, And God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air. So God created man in his own image, in the image and the likeness of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. I just love that every time I hear it. And I want to just read it again. And God said, let us make man in our own image. We have a conversation going on there. Is anybody else hearing the conversation? I'm hearing a whole lot of stuff. I'm hearing a lot of questions in my mind. I'm like, and if you're hearing the questions, guess what? Write them down. Because these are the questions that will need to be answered into your own life to bring you into that space of deliverance, to improve that your relationship with God. So write down the question that you are hearing. And God said, let us make man in our own image, just in case you didn't hear our to emphasize it, overemphasize it, in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. So God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Glory to God. That is the word of the Lord. And should there are so many questions that we could come away with tonight, right, Pastor Kirk? We could come away with so many questions that we just um, open up this study here and we will be here for hours and hours. But I am encouraging you really to write down your questions because even if we do not take your question tonight, we can look at them, we can prepare a study about it, we can have dialogue, we can continue to talk about it because that's it. We need to have conversation. We need to study, we need to engage ourselves in the word of the Lord. So one of the takeaways for me from Genesis 1, right, 26 and 27 is, what is this image of God that we speak of? Is there anybody who is uh, wanting to have an answer to that? Have you ever considered that? The minute we become saved, the minute we start going to Sunday school, we hear about that. That we've been created in the image and the likeness of God. But how many of us really stop to figure out what that is? Sometimes we're too afraid. Sometimes those above us or around us are too nervous to even try to figure out what that is. So we just swallow the pill, you know, and we just keep on going. But tonight, I want us to have that conversation. I want to stimulate you into giving some thoughts to this question. What is this image of God of which we speak? So literally, I'm literally saying, what is the image of God in man? What is that? What is the image of God in man? So remember that we're looking at the non-material aspect of man. So we could literally start there. We could say that the image of God in man is the non-material part. So let's get that together. So that kind of um, clear up a lot of stuff. So we wanted to know that if we were thinking, and some people do ponder, when we're created in the image and likeness of God, because image is just what we know, this this thing that we can see and feel and touch. 
So we think that we literally have physical features like God, our faces and stuff like that. So that might come up in some of our minds. However, we're talking about the non-material aspect of man. So the image of God is not physical. Right? It's not physical at all. It is not physical and couldn't be physical because John 4 verse 24 reminds us that God is what? Spirit. God is spirit. So we want to just write that verse down somewhere that we can go look at, look at it again and we can read it for yourself. Always reread the scriptures for yourself because you know what? You can never always just take what you hear. God is spirit. That is John 4, 24. So God does not have a physical body. God is spirit. Let's say that again. God is spirit. There is no physical body. God is spirit. Then, the image then must be non-material. Are we making sense? So it says if it's not physical, then the next element we know is that it has got to be spiritual. So it has got to be spiritual. So we're still trying to answer the question, what is this image of God in man? What, is it, what do we mean when we talk about we're created in the image and the likeness of God? What are we talking about? So we're saying this image is not physical, you know, not about physique, it's spiritual, right? So what God did in, in giving us or branding us with that image is that he copies, right, into man the structure of his own divine personality. That makes us awesome. That makes us special. Come on, mankind. Come on, humanity. God's own divine, um, what we call it, personality. Characteristics that is in us. That is what we are talking about when we mention the image and the likeness of God. So here are a few of the aspects of, of the divine personality of God in us. We are talking about language. Think about it. What other part of the creation can speak? You know, based on our cartoons and movies, I've put things now. We probably think that plants can speak. We probably think that animals can speak. We have seen it done so often that we have given second thought to understand that only human beings can actually speak. Do you see that? Only human beings can actually do that. Even if you try to practice your parrots or whatever it is, human beings can literally generate language. We talk about love. We talk about holiness. We talk about the aspects of the personality of the character or the divine nature of God. We're talking about immortality and freedom. And I want us to underline, write down freedom somewhere and draw up some little circle, circle around it or highlight the word so that you can come back to it because that is going to form a little bit of the base of tonight as we try to look at the immaterial or the non-material aspect of man. And of course, you should be able to add to the list, of course, but what we can say, we can, we can sum it up by saying that man, like God, has intelligence, right? Man has a mind, man has emotion, and man has a will. So we need to just think about those things for a little while. So, as we continue to move into the non-material aspect of man, we want to look at some of the things that are involved in the non-material aspect of man. You know, and we want to look at probably three or so points tonight. And one of the first one I want to look at is personality. And every time I think of the term personality, I don't know, but I just feel away. <laughs> I don't know. You know, how do you feel when you hear the term personality? I really feel away. I am feeling away because I recognize that many people in the kingdom feel away about even the very term personality. You know, we, we shy away from the, the term. I don't know why. But we're talking about being spirit, and most of us as Christians, we're always up in the spirit, up in the spirit. But yet still, we don't embrace the whole concept of personality so much so that many of us don't even understand our very own personality. We don't understand 
and you know the, the importance and the function of our personality. And so I, I'm telling you, I really feel that way. I literally feel like like there's a deficit. I just feel I feel like I can't just ball about it because we need to be more aware about this personality stuff. Then it is such a thing that so many Christians would not even try to let's say even do like a personality test or so. We, some of us rebuke it, please the blood of Jesus on that. Because we really have, I don't know, I don't know what would have influenced us to just be in that zone where we just don't care, we don't know, or we just don't want to know. But guys, the, the, the non-material aspect of man, the, the personality, the person, remember God would have given us his divine personality, God has his personality. Right? That's what I'm giving to us too. So we have to understand and want to know our personality. So let's just, just break that one. A few points about personality. And I'm trusting that you'll go read it because I'm not going to go very deep into it. I think we can probably have it as a conversation separately. But I want us to understand that man has a self-consciousness about him. Right? Man has a self-determination about him. Right? And so when we're looking at personality, so those things will come up in it. So we understand very much the role our personality will play in the things that we will do. Right? So that self-consciousness and, and, and the self-determination enables man, enables humans, right, to make choices. That's a biggie for us to know. Having the, uh, um, the ability to make choices. You know, the, the, the personality, the, the, the self-consciousness and the, the self-determination, it lifts human, lifts mankind above the realms of animals. So we are not animal, we are not no beast. We are raised above that, not just a little bit, but raised above the realm and the levels of animals. This personality renders us as mankind capable of redemption. Understanding what redemption is, we know that animals don't have that. This is, that is just unique to mankind, right? So personality literally reveals man's ability to exercise what God said we have, dominion over the world. Let's understand the earth, the world. We have our, our personality reveals our ability to exercise this dominion, right, that we see in Genesis 1 and verse 28. Also, we see something else that our, our personality enables us to do or equips us to do. And we see that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to care for it. So our personality helps us to develop the earth. So I begin to have some questions in my mind. And if you have any, you can just put them out there. I might not be able to respond to all of them. But others will see them and will go from whatever is happening to your mind there. Because I'm thinking that, you just look at the whole matter of our personality revealing the ability to exercise dominion over the world and also to develop the earth. And we can see that the earth left to man has been <laughs> underdeveloped in a particular way. We've been damaged, isn't it? We're talking about ozone layer, we're talking about global warming, we're talking about all kinds of things that we would have rather than developing and making it good for us and having dominion. The things that we're supposed to have dominion over and having dominion over us. So it, it is showing that our personality, something has been twisted. Have we seen that? Something has happened, right? But we will look at what has happened later on. The study tonight is to look at the non-material aspect of man, though we cannot separate it from what has happened. Some of us want to think deeply about personality, the personality of God, and, 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 and that you have the image, that image in you. That's the image of God in you. That aspect of the image, God's personality, your personality, you know, ah, whoa. And then the next thing is the spiritual being. The spiritual being. Again, we say God is spirit. John 4, 24, right? God is spirit. So the human soul is what then? Spirit. 
Are you following? Yes, ma'am. So the essential attributes of the spirit are reason. So as I, as I talk about them, I want us to be thinking. So the essential at attributes of my spirit that's reasoning and conscience and will. So we ask, what is happening? How are we? What's going on? What, what's going on with our reasoning ability? What's going on with our conscience? What as a nation, as a, as a Western Hemisphere, as a people, or Eastern Hemisphere, or whatever you want to call it, what's going on as, as Christians, you know, in us, with our conscience and just understanding that we're not just looking at individuality, but we're looking at the image of God. That's the question we're, we're, we're trying to answer tonight. We're created in the image of and likeness of God. What is that? And we said that is not the physical structure of man. That is the non-material aspect of man. And we're looking at its composition. So a spirit is a rational. It's also a moral. And therefore, it's rational, it's moral. And that makes it a free agent. So when I think about, uh, uh, Jackie, you could probably help me with this. When I think about a free agent, of course, as a sports enthusiast, you know, not a sport, but you know, selected sports. In my sport that I love, free agents or free agents, it comes up very frequently, and that's basketball. So if you, if you um, it, and basketball, and I think the the NFL, they talk about um, free agency. So we're looking at the fact that free agent and what is that? What really is that, you know? So I want us to look at that somewhat, and you might have some information about free agency if you follow sports. But let's look at it together tonight in this context. So a free agent, as a free agent, guess what? Man has life and death set before him. And what man will do? A man has the liberty of choosing the one and rejecting the other. So that's the, the, the free agent kind of, you know, thing that, 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 that we have been blessed with. So we can choose, we make choices. But I want us to look at free agency though. Being a free agent is not the right to do as we wish. Do you hear that? It's not the right to do as we wish. Rather, it is the ability to make choices. And I think somewhere along the line, the wire gets twisted or run out of credits. We don't even get the rest of the message. We just think that being a free agent, we have the right to do as we please. But if we remember when we did the recap earlier, we spoke about our, our body and, you know, just some of us just think that we're all bodies. So even if we're supposed to look there, remember that the scripture says that we are the temple. Right? And also look at why we were created. We are created for His glory. So we don't just get to do as we please. And if we're living that kind of life, where we're doing as we please, then it means that we must be displeasing our maker. We must be displeasing Elohim. Right? So let's continue to look at being a, the whole matter of free agency. We said that it is not the, the ability or to go make, do whatever we want to do, but it is to make choices. It's to decide between opposites, light and darkness, right? Black and white. It involves an innate opportunity to exercise one's will to do something or not to do the thing. All right? So we want to understand that free agency is a gift from God to man. Where God has bestowed as a part of the wonderful package of being created in His image. So that's a part of the package, right? And it's honor. It is an honor, an absolute honor. Sometimes you don't feel that way. Sometimes you feel pressure. Or we must say that, why do they have to do that? You know, because we want to run away from, you know, what we have to do and the responsibility of making the choices and making right choices. So, it's really an honor bestowed on us, allowing us the option of making responsible choices between good and evil. We have to do what? Make responsible choices between good and evil.
good and evil. So, we do not deny that some environments may facilitate um, some good or some evil choices. Nonetheless, guess what? We should not utterly negate human volition. We should never do that. But we should just leave a poor soul like that. We should never. Because volition, where is that? That, that? that is an aspect in our soul. So free agency is taken for granted in the Bible, you know. From them days, I am telling you, I don't want to look at a few instances. So in the Garden of Eden, the first ever woman, what's her name? Eve. Eve, Sister Eve, right? And she acknowledged that she had the choice either to eat or not to eat the fruit. She had the choice, right? Whether she's going to eat it or not to eat it. So we see that in Genesis 3, verse 2 to 3, and you can find it. I love it when you find it and you look at it. And it says here, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you hear she know right from wrong here. God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. Huh. We know how the story ended. We know what happened. So we don't have to go through that just now. Let's look at another scripture and see what happened. Joshua, Israel's great leader. You know, I was listening to the book of Joshua. And I'm like, man, Joshua, the guy is the guy. The guy is a warrior. You know, and he's just awesome. So Joshua, Israel's great leader, urged his people to make proper choices. Right? As to whom they will serve. And we see that in Joshua 24, verse 15. So if you would just quickly scroll or turn your Bibles to Joshua 24, verse 15. Let's see how Joshua presented the whole matter of our gifts, our free agency, you know, to the, to the, to the people. Verse 15 says, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then... Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the god of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the question comes out to you tonight. It comes back to every one of us tonight. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. It's, it's your free agency. You either choose to serve the Lord, or you're going to choose the God of, that, of, that will batter bruise you. You choose the God that will run left you when you get into trouble. You choose the God that comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. You choose the God that has no plan, you know, no proper eternal rescue for your soul, no rest. Or you're going to choose God and live. Hallelujah. So, I'm saying to you what Joshua said. Let me read that again, Joshua 24, 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, you know God calls us from time to time and is calling us and calling us and, 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 and we give arguments and we give talks and we, we behave indifferent. Well, it, it's not just now. It's not just something that you alone know it. See it here. From the days of Joshua until now, he said if serving the Lord is undesirable to you, you know, fancy. It's not something that you think you can manage. He says, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether you want to serve these kind of gods that you see or those over there where you see us for me in my house, we're going to choose the Lord. And I'm encouraging you tonight to choose with me. Let us choose the King of Kings. Let us choose the King Eternal. Let us choose the God of John 3.16 who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would choose him would not perish but have eternal life. And we continue to look at some scriptures where the will of man shows up how powerful the will of man is. So guess what guys? As human beings in our free agency state, our will is powerful and it prevents us from or it pushes us into. So we really want to look at how it affected other human, other mankind way before us and how it is really, really affecting us today. So I want us to look at Matthew 23. Find it. 
Matthew, Matthew 23, verse 37. Who is there? If you're there, you can just put a star, tap the screen or something. So I know that you're there, you know? Because we're talking together. Let's do this. And it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Are we hearing that? So that is the NIV version. But I just felt that this scripture could be a little bit more dramatic so that we can understand it a little clearer. So when I want something dramatic, I go to the message version. And the message version says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, murderer of prophets, killers of the ones who brought you good news. How often have I ate to embrace your children the way hens gather their cheeks under their wings and you wouldn't let me? That is clear. That sounds absolutely clear to me. So we can see God going after and after those people, just like he's going after us, and we are what? Not allowing him. And when he sent his people to us, what it says here? We kill them. He says, murderer, Jerusalem, murderer of the prophets, killers of the ones who brought the good news. And so this is not just a Jerusalem matter. This is a matter that is happening anywhere. Just the, recently, you see all the TikTok things and all kind of stuff, showing up people going into churches and killing pastors and doing all manner of things. We are putting out the ones who are agitating our conscience. That is it. Who are touching our conscience and, and making us becoming uncomfortable with the life that we live in. You know? Making us uncomfortable. You know, if we should borrow a few words from the song of, uh, what that guy name again? The Rising Star guy? That has a twin? Romaine? Romaine Virgo? And call, call, call the people, you know, dirty man? You know, we live the kind of dirty life them? You know, and, 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 and so, we, and our consciences are stirred, then we really, we may not pull the trigger, we may not really take the life of the person, but we really use our mouth and our words and our attitude to kill them. So the same kind of thing happening among us and to us today. And so we realize the powerful will of man. That's what we're looking at. How we can use our will to stand against God. That's literally what it is now. Using our will to stand against our creator. Let's see what um, John 5. Let's go to John 5. Try quickly to John 5. And that's a big stretch. From, from Matthew, but we're just going over to John 5, same New Testament, and we're running down to verse 39 and 40. And I do have the two versions for you. And it says here, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. Now, when I find the scripture, and I was like, ah, I have to go mark this, I have to go read it over and over, guys. Rochelle, tonight's Bible study is on the non material aspect of man. We're doing um, systematic um, theology, and we're looking at man. So, we've looked at man and God creating man and all of that. We looked at man, the material aspect, the body, and what is the purpose of the body. And now we're looking at the non material aspect of man. And we're trying to define and determine and understand what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God. So we understand the image and likeness of God that we're created in is not physical. It's not this physical structure, but it is the spirit. It is a non-material part of man. So we're going through some scriptures. We're saying we have looked at the fact that the, the spirit of man has a number of stuff. God has literally put in us. His divine personality that makes us absolutely special, and He has made us a um, much higher than higher order. Use the science term than animals, and so we're looking at getting through and looking at how our will, a part of the, that whole process, combination, what it does and how it, it it affects us. So we're here looking now at John five thirty nine to forty. And it says, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest 
for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am, standing right before you. And you aren't willing to receive me. And you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. Now this is deep. Guys, this is really deep. Let's think about it a little bit. Let's think. It says what? You have your heads in your Bibles. Like we, we study Bible study, right? We study and study. And there are people who do better than what we're doing. There are people who set aside hours per day. And they're in the Bible constantly. It says because you think you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am standing right before you. And you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. Let's see how the NIV puts it. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. So guys, this is serious. That let us not be on this call. Let us not... Be in the kingdom, moving around the things of the kingdom, doing godly stuff. And we are in that place of like inertia where we're not responding to God. We're just, do, we come Bible study, we hear the word, we still want God because that's usually the, the reason people come up for Bible study. I want Bible study, I want to know about God, I want to go have a deeper relationship with God. Yet still, as we get into the scriptures, because that's where God meets him, and he's right there calling out to us, just like all the other scriptures we have read earlier, and we're not responding, we're not moved. So we do Bible study number one, and we remain unchanged. We do Bible study number two, and we remain unchanged. We do Bible study number three, we remain unchanged. As a matter of fact, we begin to walk worse and worse and worse. And he's there saying, we are coming to him and doing all the things, you know, the religious stuff. And we're saying, I want you, but what to what effect? You know, it's just like us, you know, having these awesome worship songs. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. I lift my hands, I bow my knees, and worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, right now. And we get up. And we're still body sleeping. We're still fornicating. We're still stealing. We still refuse to forgive. We still refuse to surrender our lives to Christ. We just stay in a place. And we're not growing. And we're not moving. And God is there saying, hey, you said you want me. Here I am. We're like, I ain't ready yet. I can't make that commitment. It's like being along with a man for five, ten years. And the man is not wanting to marry you. Say so waiting and him watching. Come on. Let's 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 mark the scripture so we can look at it again. It is John 5 39 to 40. Right? 39 to 40. Let me read it again from the from the message. You have your heads in your Bible. It's constantly thinking. Constantly because you think that you'll find eternal life there. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are all about me. And here I am, standing right before you, and you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. This is the word of God. So I want to challenge somebody tonight. You have been around the things of God. You have been depending on the prayers of the faithful. You have been depending on the fasting of the faithful. You turn on the gospel music when trouble take you. When fire at your tear, you find church. And you know that the goodness is in God. You know that he is a deliverer. But you refuse to commit and surrender to God. Although he is there. He says, you refuse to come to me. That is your will at work. That is your will. That is that is a, that is a, a, a dent in your spirit. That is a, that is something wrong with you managing and utilizing the personality of God that is in you. That is something wrong with your spirit. The spirit of God that is in you resisting the spirit of God that is calling you. So I pray tonight that responding to God will be easy. Hallelujah. And we also see in John 7 verse 17 where it says here, anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak of my own. Here, are we hearing the will? Are we hearing the power of choice? Are we hearing the power of agency, free agency? Anyone who chooses 
to do the will of God. Anyone who chooses. So there are some of us who just relax, you know? And we just let the time go by. Like we're the lazy boy going on the river. But it says here, anyone who will choose to do the will of God will find out whether my teachings come from God or whether I speak on my own. Also, we can continue to look at the, the, the power of the will in man, right? And we see that the, the, the apostles made, made reference to it in Revelation 22, verse 17. And it says here, and I believe that the Spirit of the Lord is, is talking to somebody tonight. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Whatever you're in tonight, whatever corner life has had you, whatever street or lane you have been going down, the Spirit and the Bride says, Come. Right? And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. That's another will. That's another utilization of our will. That's how we make good choices. That's how we're able to discern between good and evil. That's how we don't take our free agency for granted. We respond to the Spirit. We respond to Elohim. We respond to God, our Maker. We respond to God, our Creator. He says, come. He's the all-knowing. He's the all-seeing God. He stands up like we know the story of Noah. And we hear how Noah calling the people, come, 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 come in the ark. And they laugh and they prance and they party some more and they drink some more and they gally some more or they man out some more. Whatever it is they want to do some more, they fashion out some more. Well, listen tonight. The Spirit of the Lord says, Come. 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 Come away. Come away with me. Come away. And be in my presence, I am here just to take you there. For where I am, you will be also. That's where I am, you will be also. The Spirit and the Bright says, Come, come away. Come away, come out of sin and crosses and be in my presence. I am here just to take you there. Hallelujah. That's where I am. You will be also. That's where. only talking to those who are not yet saved, but it's talking to those of us who are saved, and we're looking like the scripture we read before, we're looking like um, John 5, 4 to 9, where we are around the things of God, but we're not making any impact, our lives shallow, we're lukewarm, we're not, we're not, we can't warm water, you understand, we're not bright, so we can't find water off and up back, you know, in our Christian life, we're weak. We're not making an impact. We're, we're just going around in a circle. We're not impacting. We're not impactful. Come. The spirit of the bride says, come. Move away from that place and come into deep relationship with God. Come into the place of holiness. Come into the place. Come. Come on into the sanctuary. Come on in. Come. Just come. Hallelujah. Just come. And I want to tell you about my beloved the most beautiful among thousands and thousands, my beloved is the most beautiful among. 
He's calling you into that relationship. He's calling you back into alignment. Because I spoke earlier about what is in the different areas of our of our being, of our immaterial, non-material parts, right? And we spoke about our where our conscience and our will and our, our creativity, our motivation, and all of those things are in our spirit, right? Your God is a creative God. He is the creator. And all of that is downloaded into us. So we're creative people. When our spirit man is out of alignment with God, the things that we create will become destructive. Our, our, our motivation will be destructive to ourselves and to others. Our heart's position will be hard. Horrible. We understand what the heart of man is, the heart of man not, not submerged in God and God's purposes and, and has been transformed and renewed is wicked and seek more wickedness upon more wickedness. And so we're looking tonight to, to really step out and come out from among them. If it is that you are just acting, come out. It's okay to no longer accept the actor boy and the actor girl award. Come out from among them and just stand up with Jesus. That's what we want. The world creation waits in eager anticipation for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I want you to go back to Genesis and look at that scripture. Gen we have to listen to the scripture and look back at Genesis. Creation waits. Remember that creation existed. The bird and the donkey and the flowers and the fish and everything. And man wasn't there yet. Creation yearns for the manifestation of the sons of God. So creation is in a place of yearning to see us now in a renewed state step out and look like the image of God in which we're created in. Not in our facial things, but in our liberty because our spirit man, our personality is going to affect the choices that we make. So if we're not manifesting the personality of God, if we're not manifesting the divine nature of God, then look here. They're going to, where, where, what, who is that? Who is that? What's that? So, so we need to get to that place where we can, we can, we can make creation glad even. You understand where they say, yes, that's God's image bearer. You are God's image bearer. Come on, let those in darkness, let those who are being manhandled by the devil see you walking by and recognize that you are the image bearer of God so that they can be reminded that they too were created in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tonight, don't take the night lightly. Come home. Come home. Come home. Somebody probably just needs to say, I surrender my all. I surrender I want to be effective 
as a woman of God, as a child of God. They have somebody else who is just sick and tired of just being wishy-washy, just sick and tired of it all. When everything has been made, the way has been made. Oh, yes, the way has been made. Yeah. 
someone say, make me more like you. Break me, ah, mend the broken pieces of my life. I want to be used, come on, say, Lord, by you. If that's the only chance I want to serve, Lord, or will the fire of your spirit come on, say, Bless you. 